Hi all. Okay, um, it's been a while since I posted anything on the Hunter, so I thought I'd do a quick video um, just looking at uh, where I'm with the CAD. Um, we're nearly there with the CAD. Um, the weight is looking really good um, at, I think it's about 150 grams with all the equipment, servos, battery, um, etc. in there where we are. Uh, there we go, 152 grams basically at the moment. So, say I put another, I don't know, 10 grams worth of weight on it um, during the construction. Hopefully, we're we'll looking at an all up weight of 160, 165 grams, which is going to give me a, uh, a pretty good um, wing loading, a nice light wing loading. Um, so, that's that's looking really good. Um, so, best thing to do, I suppose, is just go through um, some of the items that I've um, looked at. CFG is really good. Um, this dial marks uh, represents a CFG. So I've moved the equipment around um, battery um, mainly really uh, to give me the best position on the ears um, on the CFG. Um, what's also nice is I've got quite a lot of room to actually move the battery up and down now um, to, to change that CFG position. So um, at the moment that works out bang on. Um, I've got good access um, to everything. I'll show you my access points. Okay, so we obviously got the canopy um, and that's going to give me access to the battery and the receiver which I've got my hands on as the new um, Spectrum um, receiver with the um, gyro in it, the Nanolite um, receiver. So they've only just come out um, and I know the MIG flies really well with the Samsung technology. So, uh, yes, yeah, a six channel AS3X uh, nano light receiver. So, um, I need to get that um, in a decent uh, place for access. And I also need to get um, parallel with the thrust line on the plane um, and perfectly level um, as per their instructions. So, I was thinking of actually putting on a tray um, that I just slide in and then lock in place. Um, so I've got good access to that. Now the um, speed controller, I think it's a castle I've got at the moment, uh, modeled there, a castle 15 amp. Yeah, it's the castle Castle Talon uh, 15 amp speed controller. Um, what I'm thinking of doing is actually attaching that into the uh, canopy. So when I take the canopy out of the speed controller comes out that way as well. Um, and the other thing I was actually thinking about was getting cooling to the speed controller should I need it. I can just means I can just cut a um, hatch, a little um, a little uh, hatch in the um, in the canopy. Uh, so even like fold it down so it's like a so the wind will come in here, the air coming in and divert down onto the um, onto the AC area. Um, and the duct the, and then then hopefully it'll vent out through the ducting. Um, I'll just show you the ducting where I'm hoping it's going to vent out. Because um, I know if you don't put holes in these things, um, it will pressurize and they'll pop the access panels and stuff off. So, um, yeah, in the ducting, I've got this little space here that I haven't actually sealed up. And I'm hoping that's going to then feed through and help cool the fan, um, the motor. Um, there you go, you can see it there. So it's a constant area of ducting, uh, but this little area is going to be left out. So I'm hoping that the, the air will come in through the canopy um, over the speed controller um, and then come through this area here and then obviously exhaust out with, with everything else. Um, if that's not enough um, space for the exhaust, I think you're supposed to have two times the area um, of the inlet for your cooling, um, otherwise it pressurizes things. So I might need to still put in some holes somewhere um, for just to stop it pressurizing. Um, okay, let's show that. Okay, that. Okay, so. Um, that's the main axis, and I've got an axis here for my servos for the uh, flying um, horizontal stab and the rudder. Uh, so if we remove this hatch, and I've got two Hobby King, uh, well, we've got Hobby King 2.5 grams um, servos in there. 
and they have I think it's 0.7 grams uh, torque. Um, and obviously, um, then these servos, sorry, computer slowing down. I've so much detail on this model. Okay, so these servos. I've got the um, rudder um, on this server here. Um, see it moving. So the throws are looking good. Um, okay. Um, so yeah, the, um, the the throws on the server look fine. If you look down at the server down over here. Um, you know, I've set up a um, limit mate and, and solid works, so uh, that all works fine. Um, and the same with the um, flying stab. So um, again, the flying stab can get to work for you. Okay, that's better. You can see a little bit more what's going on there. Um, so with the flying stab, I was quite keen just to have a single shaft, probably two mil, maybe three mil. Um, carbon fiber tube just running straight to the stab, um, and the the link for the stab is sort of buried inside the the fuzz, so there's no you won't see any linkages on the outside. It would be quite nice, but I've got a funny feeling I'm going to shoot myself in the foot with that if I need to adjust things. Um, and the sort of play I've got at the moment is that's what we're looking at. So I think there's loads of uh, movement there, and everything. Um, Works great with regards to the throw um, on their server, etc. So um, the position of this is right in close, and then we got the position on the horn um, for the actual it's right out. So there should be like loads of torque in there. Um, so like I say, with the, the flying stab, I was actually quite keen to have something quite solid in there because um, I think there'd be quite a lot of stress on on the surface. Um, so I think I've got plenty of movement there, more than enough movement there for, for that. Now the um, rudder, um, let me swing it around. Okay, um, now the rudder, um, I've got snaking up um, the front of, edge of the rudder there. Um, so this needs to be a flexible um, push rod. And I think I'm planning on using a 22 gauge a piano wire for it. Um, I'm looking for a sleeve, I can't find a sleeve for it. Um, now, uh, the old MIG, um, the 28mm MIG uh, from Iflight, um, I've got some sleeve from there that I've, I've sort of salvaged um, that might be long enough to fit that. Um, but I do actually have a quick feel of them. Um, they feel quite stiff inside that tube, so if anyone has any ideas or suggestions for uh, like a, a flexible uh, push rod I could use for the rudder. Uh, please let me know because I really appreciate that. So again, the rudder is all connected up to the server, and that. Um, okay, so the rudder is all connected up, um, and that performs fine. Um, might need to just um, adjust my limits slightly. Um, Make sure that it clears the uh, flying stab. Um, let's have a look. Yeah, so um, just make sure it clears the uh, flying stab um, when they both are sort of fully extended. Um, but yeah, so I'm quite happy with that. Um, I can just do that um, adjustment with the server throws. Um, so okay, that's all going. The the other the only other client surface I've talked about is the error ones, so I'll just show you those now. Okay, these need a little bit more work. Um, I'm not entirely happy with the covers I put on there, uh, mainly because I think it's going to cause a lot of drag. Um, I think if the covers are sort of head on into the wind, uh, or the direction of flight would be a lot better, but at the moment you can see that we're going to be hitting side on. Um, so what I might do is, instead of this piece being um, that long, I might just cut, um, just change it so it actually just covers um, the bits on the server that I need to to protect, which is this area here, um, and the these um, horizon servers, linear throw servers, don't quite just just don't quite fit inside the wing, um, so um, which is a shame. But, um, so I need to put a, a, a server cover on here for access anyway. Um, I'm just going to have a little bulge over here for the uh, for this front cog gear. 
um, and then uh, a belt just to protect this this area here from belly landings and stuff in a belly land. Okay, if I just open that uh, wing section. Okay, here. Yeah, so if you have got the left left hand wing um, opened uh, by itself, um, let me hide that. Cover. Um, and then you can see the full throw, which is way too much. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's you know it's like a three D model. That, um, so I'm going to have to put um, some limits on um, in the in the in the on the on that server. Um, I, I can do that through the receiver now um, by programming the receiver. But yeah, so um, it's a shame because I'm losing all that potential talk. Uh, I did try dropping the horn down even bigger, uh, but it actually looks ridiculous um, for that sort of size. So, um, you know, I'm not flying 3D or anything, so I know I'm going to lose resolution by doing by adjusting the limits on the server. Server, but um, it shouldn't be a problem because I'm only going to need so much. I expect, not you know, so it's crazy that is. So. Um, that worked really well, so I was really happy with that until I mirrored all these components over onto the onto the left hand wing, onto the right hand wing, and then um, I re I realised that um, these servos go aren't handed, so they exactly the same, and the actual position of the push rod here is in central. Um, so when I put the servo on the other wing, I need to move. I need to make sure that this position can be moved um, in a bit because uh, you can see there it's not actually um, spot on the middle. I'll just show you in a second. Okay, so for this, for the other wing, so this is the left wing with the server exactly as it is manufactured, and all I did was I just mirrored the components over, but obviously um, there isn't like a handed version of the server. So um, and because this point here isn't central. It means that I need to move um, when I put the correct orientated servo, and this this point here is going to be over here, and this motor is going to be over here, which means that the push rod is going to miss. Um, so what I'll need to do is move this position outboard a bit more, and then um, I should have room to get the two two positions for the um, horn. Um, so the horn on the one wing will fall over here, and then the horn for the one, the other wing will fall over here. But the servos be technically in the same space. Um, if you guys have any ideas or how, any other, any better ideas on how to do that, just just drop drop me a mail. Or let me know. Um, okay, so I need to do some more work on that. Okay, um, I'll just show you the, some of the structure um, of the plane. Now. Um, I'm still managing to cast um, the foam with a minimum sort of wall thickness at 0.5 uh, millimeters, which is really, really good. Um, very, very light, and you know it's, it's more than strong enough for, for everything I'm doing. So yesterday I um, redid my molds for the flying um, elevator um, horizontal stabilizer, and I actually put um, in the sort of a hinge line um, actually in the mold. Like a panel line, basically, basically just to test it, and um, it actually came out really, really well in the mold, um, in the cast piece, and, the, and that's only like um, half a mil uh, wide and half a mil deep, and it, it's registered really well in the final um, cast piece. So I'll, I'll, I'll do some video on that when I get a chance. So, um, so I've started actually doing the final parts for the plane, um, and. Um, they, they're coming out great, and this, the wall thickness. If I um, just make it transparent, um, the wall thickness on these open areas I've got down to like half a mil. It's almost like a covering. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll talk a lot more on that when I do the video on how I'm doing the molds and the castings. Um, now the wing, 